everyone. The topic I'll be presenting today is nosocomial infections. So for an outline of the presentation, I'll be starting off with a quick introduction about me, and then we'll be getting into the basics, and then we'll be talking about cause and effects, and then I'll be briefing you guys on my research and what work I did, and then we can talk about what can we do as future health professionals and what individuals can do to combat this issue. And then we'll be talking about the big picture and putting everything into context and how this issue fits into the vast world of global health. So now for a quick introduction about me. Um, hi everyone, I'm Kirti and I'm a rising senior at Lambert High School in Swanee, Georgia. And a few activities I'm involved in outside of this conference include being a research intern at the American College of Cardiology, being a HOSA chapter officer for Lambert HOSA, which is the largest secondary chapter in the world, being a summer research student where I'm currently working on a literature review focused on the intersection between genetics and cardiac disease, and I'm also an intern at Turn Up Activism, which is a national grassroots organization that focuses on social, political, and environmental issues and educating the community. And of course, I'm also a disaster workforce team lead at the American Red Cross, where I've been volunteering for around three years. And in the future, aspire to be a cardiac surgeon. So now let's get into the basics. What are nosocomial infections? Of course, there's a dictionary definition, which I have listed on the screen for you. But in simple terms, nosocomial infections are diseases caused by pathogens that are developed from being in a healthcare facility, and they occur during the time that you were there, which is why these infections are also more commonly known as hospital-acquired infections. Now, why are these infections important? First of all, it is a rising issue, and it's a rising issue that needs a solution. These infections pose a threat to the integrity of global health as they contribute to an increased number of deaths. And if these infections aren't combated, they'll continue to cause more deaths and pose serious threats to healthcare facilities, patients, and incur crippling costs for the healthcare system. About seven to 10% of all patients in developed and developing countries experience these infections each year. And HAI is one of the top 10 leading causes of death and that rank continues to rise as infections agents become more resistant prevent to prevention methods. And over 700,000 patients in the United States contract A or multiple infections each year and close to 100,000 deaths also occur as a result of these infections, which reiterates the prevalence of this issue. Not to mention these infections also pose a serious economic withholding with almost 28 to $38 billion each year being poured into combating nosocomial infections. Now to move into cause and effect. So what are the main contributors and what are the impacts of these infections? Now there's six main types of nosocomial infections, them being central line associated bloodstream infections, catheter associated urinary tract infections, surgical site infections, hospital acquired pneumonia, ventilator associated pneumonia, and CDIs. There's also a few groups of bacteria that are most commonly associated with these infections and I have those listed on the slide. Now, I'd like to just give a brief definition of what each of these are, and there's also a few other stats and facts that I have listed on each of these slides, so feel free to look at those um, by pausing the video. But first, we'll start off with central line-associated bloodstream infections, which is also known as CLABC. This is essentially a serious infection that occurs when bacteria or viruses enter the bloodstream through the central line. Next is a C a UTI or a catheter associated urinary tract infection, which is an infection involving any part of the urinary system, including the urethra, bladder, ureters, and kidney, and it's the most common HAI that's been reported. Next is a surgical site infection or an infection that occurs after surgery in the part of the body where the surgery took place, and these can be super superficial, which means they only involve the skin, or more serious, which means they involve tissues under skin, organs, and even implanted material. Next is HAP or hospital acquired pneumonia. And this is essentially pneumonia that was not present at incubating at the time of the hospital admission. And it develops at least 40 hours after hospital admission in patients who aren't receiving mechanical ventilation. And pneumonia is essentially an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both lungs. And those sacs may fill with fluid or pus and that causes coughing with phlegm, pus, fever chills, and even difficulty breathing. This is a really common HAI. And then next we have VAP or ventilator associated pneumonia, which is essentially pneumonia that's associated from a lung infection that develops with a person who is on a ventilator. And a ventilator is just a machine that helps a patient breathe by giving them oxygen through a tube placed in the patient's mouth or in the patient's nose. And finally, we have CDIs, which is essentially an infection that's caused by the disruption of a normal healthy bacteria in the colon. And that's often from antibiotics, which in 
means that the toxin-producing bacteria causes a more severe form of antibiotic-associated diarrhea. And this is also very common, nosocomial infection. So I listed specific causes and contributors on each of those slides, but these can all be generalized into four main sectors, and that being multidrug resistant pathogens, invasive devices and hospital equipment, invasive procedures, and a lack of hygiene and lack of strict sterilization procedures. Now, what do these infections have, like what is their effect on the body? Now, these infections can have a variety of effects depending on the pathogen, and for the six main types that I discussed earlier, the effects can consist of symptoms listed specifically under each of those infections, but the main effects include fatigue and fever, shock, organ failure, and even death, which is why mortality rates are rising due to these infections. And there's, of course, antibiotics and treatments for the majority of these infections, but I'll be discussing those in the prevention section of the presentation. So what impact does this have on global health? First, lack of quality care. Second, increased costs and expenses. And third, high mortality rates. Now, these contributors to these infections are reflective of improper care and proper inf improper infection controls. And that leads to increased costs and expenses that we must incur in order to combat these infections that we've created. And that also means high mortality rates for the patients and that negates the purpose of global health, which is focused on improving health for all. So what does this mean in numbers? Essentially means that 1.7 million patients are impacted by nosocomial infection each year, and three-fourths of all those infections start in common places like nursing homes and doctor offices that we see and go to every day. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about my research and what I did relating to this issue. So I essentially created a project um, that developed a novel antimicrobial coating that utilized natural molecules in order to prevent the spread of E. coli related nosocomial infections from prevalent hospital equipment. So the project investigated two natural antimicrobials and their impact on controlling the spread of infection on prevalent materials and devices used in the hospital. And the project had three stages. So I essentially first confirmed antimicrobial properties towards E. coli in two natural mo molecules being cinnamaldehyde and curcumin. And then I understood those chemical properties in relation to the targeted materials, which were PVC, stainless steel, and cotton cloth. And then I honed in on a novel antimicrobial coating that was aimed towards inhibiting the spread of E. coli on those materials for prolonged amounts of time. And in order to understand the chemical properties, I researched the conductivity and wettability of those molecules, and I found that cinnamaldehyde was more effective. And then I essentially created an antimicrobial coating, and the effects of that solution were measured by utilizing GFP, which is a fluorescent protein containing E. coli, to view its abundance through a fluorescent microscope and running images through the ImageJ software to quantify that fluorescence. And I concluded that curcumin was more effective as an antimicrobial coating. So now I'd like to hit on prevention, which is super, super important, considering that this is um, the most relevant to carrying on the purpose of global, global health. So of course, there's targeted treatment by each infection, and I have that listed on the slide here, and there's specific types of treatments and antibiotics that you can use for each of these nosocomial infections. But in the broader picture, what first can experts do? First and foremost being protocols, so ensuring always that protocols are being put into place in order to combat potential infection. Next is quality care, so performing procedures and attending duties with the utmost care in order to prevent mistakes. Third is research, so conducting research in order to combat MDRs and understand more about what we can do to help prevent these infections from spreading is super, super key. Fourth is antibiotics, so focusing more on antibiotic treatments that will negatively be susceptible to pathogens very easily. And then fifth is attention. So paying close attention and taking notice of small details is super important in order to ensure safe treatment. And finally, chain of infection. So understanding the chain of infection and placing preventative measures that will stop the problem at its root are all things that experts can do and health professionals can do in order to combat this issue. And then what can we do right now? So first and foremost, personal hygiene. <laughs> Definitely washing your hands, staying clean, and in a time like we are now with COVID, this is also something that we're very much stressing on. And then second is taking precautions. So being careful of the environment that we put ourselves in. And third is education. So taking the time to educate ourselves of potential risks and understanding the preventive measures are super important as well. Finally, the conclusion. 
So these are four key takeaways that I'd like you guys to kind of instill after the presentation. So understanding these issues and taking preventative steps are two of the best ways to contribute to improving global health and consistent efforts taken in the of these resolve these issues will provide a better future for next generations. And taking precautions and having proper personal hygiene are some of the easiest and best ways to fight diseases and have the most impact on global health. And finally, further research on these infections and preventative measures for these infections will have a number of positive effects, specifically understanding MDRs and creating targeted solutions. And here are just a few resources that you can use in order to help yourself help educate yourself on global health issues, such as nosocomial infections. And here's my work cited. And thank you so much for listening to the presentation. And if you have any questions at all, definitely feel free to reach out and my email is on the screen. Thank you.